Now we come to the big one. Uh, the ISO 27000 family, and it is a family. Uh, quite a few uh, standards in the ISO 27000 family. Um, and if you are familiar with ISO and the fact that you get charged for all the standards, you will be happy to know that ISO 27000 itself is free. Uh, of course, basically all it does is uh, give you a bit of a glossary and a catalog of the available uh, standards in, in the 27000 family. Um, Anyway, a uh, little, little bit of background, a little bit of history here, because it came from uh, the British standards, um, originally. Uh, British standard uh, 7799. Now, the uh, British have standards for everything. There is a British standard for a cup of tea, and... Uh, for fans of the Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy. No, I do not know if it is a really hot cup of tea, but there is a British standard cup of tea. Uh, so they got lots and lots of standards and uh, they developed uh, something called 7799 and that was to do with information security. Now, um, by the time they, they finished, uh, 7799, they started to realize it was a, you know, one of the checklist models. And uh, they started to realize that this could not be the be-all and end-all. And, and so uh, they were um, already preparing for uh, a second and third um, part to the uh, information security standard. And uh, so, uh, British Standard 7799 very quickly became British Standard 7799-1, uh, part one of, of a series. Um, the, uh, at about the same time that all of this was going on, the uh, International Standards Organization was looking at making an international standard for information security, and uh, they created, uh, as, as noted, uh, 27,000. Actually, first of all, they created 17799, which was essentially British Standard 7799-1. Now, uh, you can see the obvious similarities in, in the numbering scheme there, but they then realized the uh, same thing that the British standards people had already realized, which was that there was going to be more involved here. In the 17799 area, addressing scheme, uh, you know, available numbers weren't available around that uh, area and sufficient uh, size and volume and so when they did uh, or, or went for part two of the series British Standard 7799-2 uh, they decided that they would go to an area of the numbering scheme that had more available space, more address range. And so that was um, why they went to 27,000. 27,000 was unused, uh, and so they figured they could do lots and lots of different standards if needed. And uh, so uh, 27,000, as I say, sort of became a... Um, uh, a placeholder, a marker, a an introduction to the family. And as I say, uh, it's kind of a catalog of the other available standards. Um, so the first one that they did was actually British Standard 27000-2, which they named 
27,001. And then, just to keep everything clear and in the same place, they took uh, 17799 and renumbered that to 27,002. So, 27,001 is British Standard 7799-2, and 27,002 is essentially British Standard 7799-1. Is that absolutely clear to everybody? At any rate, uh, that's, that's the way that it worked. That's the, the way uh, that they uh, developed that numbering scheme and why there is this um, sort of dissimilarity or disparity between the two numbering schemes in, in those two areas. Now, um, that doesn't matter uh, as much anymore because everybody, you know, people don't go for British Standard 7799, uh, either 1, 2, or 3, and uh, instead go for the International Standards Organization version uh, in the 27,000 family. Um, and the 27,000 family, as I mentioned, is huge. Now, uh, and an, an awful lot of groups have started up trying to address different areas of information security, uh, trying to provide standards um, in a number of these different areas. And uh, doing that, um, well, Sometimes these groups um, either move very slowly and haven't yet gotten to the point where they've got even a, a draft standard to propose and sometimes just dissolve without ever getting to that point. So um, in terms of actual standards, there are going to be... Uh, gaps in the numbering sequence and some of those gaps are probably going to continue to exist because uh, some of those subject areas topic areas um, the working groups for them have in fact disbanded uh, but there's still there's there's a, a huge number of groups there's a huge number of topics there are uh, a great number of uh, the standards, and, and these standards are, this is more guidance, this is more guidelines, this is more advice, recommendations on, on what you should be doing uh, than possibly what you uh, tend to know as actual standards. But um, it is, uh, you know, one of the best resources, although uh, fairly expensive when you have to pay for a whole bunch of these things and uh, it is still under development so you're going to see you know dozens of, of standards uh, that are officially recognized dozens more in draft stages and dozens and dozens more that are in early stages and may never actually get anywhere <laughs>